Now we're going to get started talking about enzymes. Um, what are enzymes? They are catalysts. They speed up a reaction. Uh, if you remember from intro chem, whenever you have an energy diagram, the um, enzyme can lower the activation energy of a reaction. So that's how it speeds it up. Um, enzymes are mainly protein molecules. There are some enzymes that are not proteins, but the majority of enzymes are proteins. Um, how do you name an enzyme? Well, there are two parts to the name. There's the prefix and the suffix. Let's start with the suffix. The suffix of the majority of enzymes is an ase. So if you see the suffix ase, that means you're dealing with an enzyme. Amylase, sucrase, lipase, kinase. There are some enzymes that end with an IN. Those are the older ones, the ones that are uh, were first worked on or first uh, researched. Uh, the digestive enzymes, pepsin, chymotrypsin, trypsin. Um, but the majority of enzymes have that have that ASE ending. Now the prefix is usually um, dealing with what type of reaction it is. And it actually makes it so much easier to understand reactions because the name of the enzyme is basically telling you what the reaction is doing. So when we get into all the metabolic reactions and you need to know, you know, all these different reactions, you just look at the name of the enzyme and it gives you a hint as to what is going on. So for example, a transferase enzyme will be transferring a substance, putting it from one to another. A, an oxidase would basically be doing a redox reaction. A dehydrogenase removes hydrogens. A hydratase hydrates. A dehydratase dehydrates. So the prefix will give you a lot of information. Um, some enzymes have a prefix that tell you what substrate it's going to be working on. The word substrate is used in enzyme chemistry instead of the word reactant. So anytime you have an enzyme catalyzed reaction, you don't call it a reactant anymore. You call it a substrate. substrate. So some enzymes have the um, substrate that the enzymatic enzyme is working on as part of the name. For example, sucrase works on sucrose. Uh, amylase works on amylose. Lipase works on lipids. Okay, so it catalyzes the reaction on those molecules. All right. Uh, in general, the enzymes are categorized into six major classes, and those six major classes are based on function. Um, these are the six major classes uh, oxidoreductase, transferase, hydrolase lyase, isomerase, and ligase. So I'll um, just give you a little bit of information about each one. And oxidoreductase, just from the terminology, oxidoreductase, these types of enzymes probably catalyze redox reactions, oxidation reduction, where the enzyme will remove hydrogens from one molecule and help catalyze the addition of the hydrogens on another molecule. So it's a redox reaction. Uh, the enzyme you'll be seeing a lot of in metabolism is dehydrogenase. The dehydrogenase enzyme is in the category of oxidoreductases. Okay, transferase. Transferase, like I mentioned a little earlier, is an enzyme that catalyzes the transfer of something. And usually an ATP is going to be involved um, not always, but I think not always. Yeah, not always. It's just that the one I worked with had an ATP was involved. Um, the one I worked with was a kinase. Kinase is a transferase enzyme. Kinase transfers a phosphate group from um, an ATP to a substrate or from a substrate to another substrate, but something, is, an ATP is involved. Um, but the word kinase means transfer a phosphate group, okay, from that ATP. Hydrolase, those are enzymes that catalyze hydrolysis reactions. What's a hydrolysis reaction? It's usually just um, with water 
and you are hydrolyzing a bond. We've seen some hydrolysis reactions already in organic and in biochemistry. Uh, so for example, a maltase enzyme or any of the carbo uh, carbohydrase enzymes would be examples of hydrolase because you need a molecule of water to break those glycosidic bonds and these types of enzymes catalyze those hydrolysis reactions. Okay, what is a lyase? A lyase has something to do with a double bond. So basically adding things on a double bond or removing things and creating a double bond. So examples of this would be a hydratase. If you hydrate a double bond, remember hydration reactions of double bond where you put an HOH on the carbons of the double bond. So hydratases would be examples of lyase enzyme. Dehydratases would also be examples of lyase enzymes where you're removing an HOH in an alcohol and then you create a double bond and create an alkene. Um, so that's what a lyase is. Isomerase is just the name. It's basically creating an isomer. Um, you're gonna see this in glycolysis. In glycolysis, there's an enzyme called phosphoglucoisomerase, where it takes a glucose and turns it into its isomer, fructose. So you turn a phosphoglucose into a phosphofructose. You also see it again with a mutase enzyme. There's um, something called 3-phosphoglyceromutase. Uh, so it takes a 3-phosphoglycerate and just moves the phosphate group and turns it into a 2-phosphoglycerate. So the mutase is a type of isomerase. So that's what this is. And then finally, ligase. Let me push this down. Ligase, you saw this um, in, I think it was DNA recombinant technology with DNA ligase. Uh, ligase is you're gluing two things together. You are sealing things. Um, the Aside from uh, ligase or DNA ligase, a whole bunch of other enzymes. I think I wrote a couple of them down. Um, the uh, synthetase, when you're synthesizing something, uh, citrate synthetase, you're, you're creating some new bonds, uh, putting two things together, sealing things. Um, those are examples of ligase enzymes. And have some ATP involved here too. Let's look at our what you need to know list. And we start talking about how an enzyme works. And there are some key terms you guys need to know. So there are a few key amino acids in an enzyme that make up something called the active site. And there, this is exactly where all the actual enzymatic reaction occurs. So you've got this big enzyme, this big protein molecule, three-dimensional structure, and then you could have a section of the enzyme Let's say it's right here. This could be the active site. Okay, I mean, this is my little representation. Your book has a better drawing, though. All right, so the active site is where the catalysis, the actual reaction occurs. You're going to have a substrate plus an enzyme. The substrate is going to bind to the enzyme and form something called an enzyme substrate complex. And then you're going to have a product and the enzyme will come out intact. So the cool thing about enzymes is that you can keep using them over and over again and they don't get consumed by the reaction. They're just are regenerated and then another substrate could bind, form an enzyme substrate complex and produce the product and the enzyme just keeps recycling, okay? So you know the term substrate, you know the term enzyme, you know the term active site. There are some um, other terms we need to know. Some enzymes are simple enzymes and some enzymes are conjugated enzymes. What is a conjugated enzyme? 
A conjugated enzyme is an enzyme, oops, enzyme that has a prosthetic group. So you have a protein, which is the enzyme portion, plus a prosthetic group. Prosthetic group is a non-protein portion, non-protein. Now, some enzymes that are conjugated enzymes will not work unless the prosthetic group is there. So if this is not there and you just have the protein, that enzyme may not work. A conjugated enzyme without its prosthetic group, so if it's missing the prosthetic group, is called an APO enzyme. Okay? What are these prosthetic groups that we're going to be talking about? Prosthetic groups are things called cofactors. There are organic cofactors, and there are inorganic cofactors. The organic cofactors are sometimes called coenzymes. They're not enzymes, but they're called coenzymes. This is looking really messy. Um, we'll finish this up on the next video. Okay.